Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Canary Room. Episode six of season four. We've made it to episode six already. I can't quite believe it. Uh, coming up on the show today, it's a return of question time. Your favourite features, the, uh, the native diaries. Uh, some news in the Norwich Notebook and the new colour corner as well. We'll check in, of course, with the fifes. Uh, we've got question time to an uh, action-packed show today um, and plenty, plenty of things going on in the Canary Room. Before we kick off, well, a huge thanks to those people who've donated to the channel. Michael Burling, Mike, you're an absolute superstar, mate. Thank you very much. I watch with interest our Indie Rose uh, developing her her skills and, and following in her father's footsteps. I've seen her train chucks and now it seems she's um, she's moving into the dog father training as well. So uh, keep your eye out there, Mike. You know, you, the little one there who's going to take over the mantle, I'm sure. Um, massive thank you to Dottie Real uh, and to David Taylor as well, who've um, donated to the channel. Gents, really appreciate it. Thank you. If you're able to, on the home screen of our YouTube channel, you'll see a little donate button, big or small. Everything is very, very much appreciated. And last but by no means least, a huge, huge, huge Canary Room thank you. And my thank you as well to Gary Tonks. Now, Gary got in touch with me after episode four of the show when we'd lost a couple of buff Norwich cockbirds and uh, and said, um, you know, I, I've got a couple here, Matt, if they're any use to you. Uh, a quick phone call, quick arrangement to collect. And, um, well, we'll see them later in the Norwich Notebook. Gary, um, you restored my faith in bird keeping, which, uh, for reasons I won't go into, has been tested over the last uh, couple of months. Um, so, as always, everybody, grab yourself a cuppa. I don't need to go out of shot today. Sit back, and as always, enjoy the show. Hey, uh, a busy couple of weeks in the Canary Room since you were last here. Um, we start off with uh, a quick update on the fifes, although inevitably it won't be that quick. Um, We've had uh, what I think is a um, another uh, sex change. Uh, I actually think now one of the variegated birds. One was definitely a cock bird. I think the other one might be a hen. Um, not not the only sex change we've got today. Um, and you know, it's it just goes to show, really. Um, I, you know, I've been looking at both of these birds, and and not just me, some uh, some other breeders who, who've kept birds for a very, very long time. You know, would uh, visually looking at this bird would absolutely say it was a cock. Um, it looks to be building a nest, so uh, cock birds will pick up. They will lay um, nesting material in nests, uh, but they won't build full nests. So we'll see on that one. Um, it's part of bird keeping, isn't it? You know, you get thrown curveballs, you have to find a way of dealing with them. Um, what is really, really pleasing, though, is the best uh, male uh, cockbird in the shed, The for me anyway, the, the heavily variegated yellow cockbird. He has, um, he has filled eggs, uh, so I checked one of the nests of uh, the buff hen and um, she's got three eggs under her she did lay four i've, I've put one under the a gap mosaic um, and all of those eggs look to be full uh, which is great news so you know his first mating these filled eggs can't ask for much more than that there is another buff hen in there whose eggs are clear uh, but i'm gonna let her sit i'm gonna let her sit the duration of 14 days and i'll run him in again after that um we started to get particularly with the cinnamons now we've started to get a flurry of eggs so two of the cinnamon hens are both laid um so they laid the third egg today uh, they are on um they've both been mated i've seen both of the birds mated by the uh, the three parts dark carrier cocks so Keep our fingers crossed with those. There's uh, plenty of treading going on in the canary room. Um, I have been striking some of the cock birds. I've got a couple of different things going on this year, actually. So firstly, I've been striking some of the cock birds. So what do I mean by that? Uh, running them into a cage, 
running uh, into, a, into a show cage, running them into the cage with the hen, watching them tread and mate, and then running them straight back out again. Um, and then with a number of the other cockbirds, where I'm running them in, in, in sort of trios, one of the things that I've done, um, as we can see here with actually the, the, the carrier cock, is I'm just pulling the divider back. Uh, so I'm letting him run in with one hen, uh, and then I'm pulling the divider back, and I'm letting him run in with another. And I'm doing that with three or four of the different cockbirds. Now, there's a risk in doing that, particularly when they're younger birds, because they may you know, pair bond with one and not the other. But the way I figure it, I'm not in the canary room all of the time. The way I figure it is, you know, if they're in their own individual stock cages, they've got no chance of filling eggs. And a lot of the mating will happen when you're outside of the room. Uh, you know, so I haven't seen some of the birds um, mate, but I've got full eggs. So, you know, a lot of things happen when you're outside of the room, either in the very early morning or very uh, late on in the evening, just before dusk. So I figure just, to, you know, for the best chance to get full eggs and full nests, that that is the uh, uh, an appropriate way to go uh, based on, you know, based on what I have here in terms of time and time available. Um, majority of the fifes now have got nest pans in. Uh, some of them are still playing with strings. Some of them are just starting to build up in earnest. Uh, so they're all sort of coming into condition. They're not all in condition at the same time, of course, but they are starting to get there. So um, egg draw here, filling up nicely, filling up really nicely. So hopefully, you know, as we move into April, first chicks will hatch, I think, end of March, beginning of April. Uh, as we move into April, we'll start getting new life in the canary room, which will be, which will be fantastic. And um, as I say, with the uh, with the variegated yellow, uh, which I now think is a hen, um, not an ideal situation. So uh, you know, essentially, I've got nine buff hens in this side of the room and and two cockbirds to cover them, which is not. Uh, not unachievable. Um, I know one of those cockbirds is is capable of filling eggs now, which is great. The other one as yet hasn't put a hen down. Um, he's got his first hen, which is a clear. She's just starting to build a nest. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll see some eggs and some full eggs off him as well. Um, challenge, whenever you are running a bird with more than one hen, not always going to get nests of full eggs. Um, you know, uh, and... I've sort of seen and heard and a couple of people have asked me over the last couple of weeks, you know, how many times do you run a cockbird in? How many matings do they need to, to get full eggs? Depends on the birds. You know, I've had I've had uh, birds that have, have tread once and, and, and filled around. I've had birds that have tread day after day after day after day and all the eggs have been empty. So it does just depend. Generally speaking, what I do is I run the birds in until the first or second egg is laid. Uh, so I'll keep running the cockbird in until the first or second egg is laid. Um, and then I'll leave the hen where I'm running single hens, I'll leave the hen to it. So that's where we are with the fifes. We've got, I think, three, three or four fife hens still to put pans in with. So not all the nest pans are in yet. Um, and we'll have a sort of steady staggered start. And, and, and hopefully what that means is that, you know, we'll be able Able to once the young come through fingers crossed we'll be able to move them on in a staggered way and that will help with room in the canary room and room as we move young birds out into into the garage as well so that's it with the fives so far so good um, time now to move on to our friends the natives it's time for the native diaries The, um, the native birds have um, have really come on since the last time we were in the canary room and, and it's been visible, really visible. A um, lot more activity, a lot more calling. And we can see the, uh, the red poles here, two of the red poles sort of beaking at each other. And 
I'm slightly nervous about this behaviour. The you remember in in a few episodes ago that I, I said that the the uh, the non-visual pied, it's a split pied bird. Um, I'd seen some red come through on its chest. Now hens will carry red, um, but I was slightly slightly concerned. And the 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 beaking is still going on. And you know, have I confused? Uh, love for aggression easily done um so we'll keep we'll keep an eye on those the the other um red pole bird i think is is a cock uh, with the other red pole hen uh, so i think we've got a pair there hopefully we've got three pairs and um, if not um not quite sure what i'll do uh whether i'll i, I don't want to waste um you know a pied cock bird of course um so we'll see. What I have been doing is giving the, the red poles, the bullies, uh, some mealworms. So they've got um, live mini mealworms as well. Um, they seem to be uh, enjoying them. Um, and just looking, you know, looking at the behaviour of all the birds. I've got some footage here of one of the um, Isabel Siberian goldfinches with a little bit of nesting material in its mouth. The uh, the bullies um, they've been picking up. The uh, the siskins have been picking up. The red poles have been picking up. No evidence of nest building yet, but you know all of the sort of signs of advancement are there and there to see, which is which is really encouraging. They're they're kind of where I want them to be. The um, the absolute delight. You know you shouldn't have favourites really should you because uh, you know the birds are like children you should love them all um, uh, equally and uh, and of course I do um, but I do have one or two favourites and the the classic Siberian goldfinch cock has really 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 caught my uh, imagination caught my eye this year we've seen him a few times doing his little dance uh, I caught him on film again here doing his dance and I think you know, as, as you start to film the birds in, in the room, what, what becomes evident is quite quiet now because I'm talking, but what becomes evident is is the din, uh, the noise that's developed. And you can possibly hear away the, the poles chirping away. Occasionally you'll hear that horrible rasp of the siskin cock. Um, I have absolutely love the siskins, but that that noise goes right through me. Anyone who's kept siskins or knows will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, thanks to everybody who, who got in touch. I sort of posed the question of what should go out in the flights. And I think I said in the last episode, I've, I've changed my mind on this probably a dozen times. And, and the consensus was probably the bullfinches would be best out in the flights. Um, and actually, I'm inclined to agree. But I'm not going to do that. I think the greenies are still going to go out there. Um, the bullies are, are nice and settled um, in the canary room, and they're um, you know they seem to be in good condition. The hens picking up, so I'm just I don't I don't want to mix things up with them. I, I've probably got that wrong, and I'll make a whole host of mistakes this year when it comes to the native finches when it comes to the canaries as well i'll make a whole series of mistakes and i will show you them all uh, and see uh, a if i learn by them and b if there's an opportunity for you to learn from them as well so native birds in the room they're in you know nice form developing nicely I've also seen the native birds in the garden. We've seen a return this week of the goldfinches. Sadly, uh, I didn't manage to get the camera out in time. Um, I did try and get what I think is possibly a blackbird on uh, on video, uh, picking up some of the nesting material that it, it uh, that I must have taken out of the canary room. So have a little look at that now. So they're picking up. There's a pair of dunnocks as well doing, you know, looking to build a nest in the uh, in the room. Uh, as well not in the canary room i hasten to add just in one of the bushes outside of the canary room so that's all looking good um garden birds coming in uh, onto good condition as well as are our native finches we're going to take a closer look at one of these a little bit later on in the show since this week's bird of the week so we've gone from the natives well it's time we'll follow that of course with the norwich it's time now for the norwich notebook
You can see perhaps behind me that there's a uh, a number of pans now in for the Norwich. And um, I did that earlier in the week. I decided that I put uh, some pans in. There's um, been a, a little bit of activity, which is good to see. Uh, inevitably, I think I, I watched uh, the last episode back yesterday. Um, which is an unusual thing for me, to be honest. I, I, after I've edited them, I generally don't watch them back again. Perhaps I should. Uh, I'll probably avoid repeating myself. Um, but I know I said in there about one of the white birds, which uh, I had down as a cock, and I said, you know, it's um, I've got it down as a cock, and, you know, birds will pick up string and, and everything else. It's, it's built a nest. Uh, so, as I said earlier, you know, often the... Um, the white birds can be a little bit more difficult to uh, to sex. It has uh, built a nest. Um, I've shuffled things around with the Norwich, actually. Um, I've moved the, the dark yellow hen into a cage down the side. She's... She's in and out of condition, and I'm going to really focus on her um, and try and get her into condition maybe for something later on in the in the breeding season. Try and get one of the yellow Norwich cocks over her, maybe even try and get the Linnet cock over and do some mewling. So we're, we're sort of parking her for now. But what we've got, um, uh, the pair up here, they're picking up in earnest. I've got then a single buff hen here. Uh, my intention is to run... This cockbird, albeit he's an unflighted cockbird, over this hen here, which I do think is a buff hen. In here, then, I've got a, a, a buff cockbird and now what I what I believe to be a white hen. And then, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the show, um, uh, a gentleman I'd never met before, uh, and that makes for me that you know that makes it even more um, even more special. Uh, and, I, and I can't, Gary, I can't thank you um, enough for your incredible generosity uh, of a donation of two buff cock birds to the canary room. Uh, one here, an unflighted bird, variegated mark on its head. Uh, get a closer look at it now. Um, that's with um, a similarly marked white hen bird. Markings don't mean anything, but a similarly marked white hen bird. And then at the top, we can see another real beautiful specimen, a... Um, uh, another variegated buff cock bird and and you can see you know the level of fitness that Gary's managed to achieve on this bird they've only been in here a week so I can't take any credit for that he's absolutely bouncing and belting it out so high hopes both of those birds are in good fitness um, really really nice birds as well so indebted to Gary for that thank you um, let's see let's see what they produce there's inevitably going to be uh, some heartache with them um, I think that's one of the challenges uh, I know with the Norwich you know we've got to get them absolutely bouncing uh, and then hope that they will um, that they will fill their eggs but you know what would the canary room be without highs and lows and lows and lows so there on Norwich I think what I'm going to do now before we move into the bird of the week is I'm going to have a little bit of time on the Irish Fancy and um, a new addition into the Canary Room this year they don't have their own feature they don't have their own segment but it seems appropriate just to do a little bit of an update on them so the Irish are just in this cage behind me now uh, the regular viewers to the show will know that I bought a trio of Irish Fancy in this year uh, two yellow hens and a buff cockbird um, the idea being being to mule one of the yellow hens uh, as things have turned out with the linnet cock um, and uh, to run the others as a straight pair and possibly if we need to to, to, to use them as a, uh, a fostering pair for, for some of the native finches later on in the season if we need to if not keen to you know to, to build a, a, a small line of Irish fancy out I think they're, they're a delightful bird um, gonna need a bigger room aren't I just, just gonna need the bigger room. Um, so, um, the the cockbird in here has already put one hen down. She's now on four full eggs. And and what I've done in this cage is I've I've run him in with the hen. 
she's starting to build up and um, he's probably been in there for about five days now and um, I've split the uh, the cage here you might be able to see behind me the dividers in here um, also we've got the linnet cock on this side and the Irish fancy pair on this side and um, as soon as she's laid the second egg what I'll do is I'll set them and I'll put the wire divider back in so the linnet cock can see her again and um, they've been away from each other uh, for, as I say, for about five days or so now. So hopefully, when um, when he sees her, the, the 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 sparks will be reignited, and he'll look to um, to mate with her. Um, that's the hope, anyway. Um, so, just a little thing on the Irish fancy. They, they are, you know, a, a really, really, really delightful bird. And, you know, dual purpose, really, in the canary room. They're going to be here as, as foster parents, but they're here in their own right as a, as a lovely bird, too. So, thought I'd give you a little update on them. I will, as the season goes on, drop little updates in every now and again on them, too. Uh, but it is that time already of the show. It's time for this week's Bird of the Week by popular demand this week's bird of the week let's take a look by popular request this week's bird of the week is a bullfinch cock bird um, if i was to tell you that he's just been caught up from the flights and within maybe 10 seconds of going in the show cage I put the camera on to film um, and what you can see is that footage uh, and you get to see I think his steadiness in that cage um, what an absolute stunning stunning bird I think um, the you always sort of race away I certainly do anyway in the canary room with you know this is this year but what does next year look like because you know largely I, I need to do things now to help next year um, and and hopefully um, you know fingers crossed we can breed some bullfinches this year and this guy will you know be pivotal to that he's the only bullfinch cock bird I've got um, what I'd like to do obviously is breed them I have got another bully hen um, I would maybe um, I know Shane's got bullfinches haven't you Shane um, so maybe do a swap with Shane one bird for another who knows um, assuming I breed any birds of course um, but I, I'm, I'd like to think that there'd be a couple of pairs of bullfinches in the canary room next year um, time of course will tell uh, with that but it's this week's bird of the week an absolute beauty it is our bullfinch cockbird they um, seem to have got off to a really good start the new colours and uh, we can see that there's um, there's five pairs, four of them now are on eggs. It's only the agat mosaics here that are yet to lay. Uh, the rest are set. The agat mosaics at the top are full. They're on four eggs. There is um, six eggs, although one of them's a fife under the uh, red, black, grey wing here. Um, and if you just look at the eggs, actually, you can see in the nest that there's a there's a darkness to them. Uh, so that the, they've been set about a week now, um, and there's a darkness to them that that would normally indicate that they are full or um, they have got something in them. Um, so four sitting, uh, which is good. The Norwich. Uh, 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 apart from one that's, that, that's sort of starting to build up the Norwich uh, a couple of weeks away yet really from, um, from from laying so with any luck we'll we'll time this just about right uh, and we'll get a round of these away before we need to use them as feeders as I say with any luck but the way things go in the canary room pff, who knows what will happen so um, they're on eggs they're um, in good form um, I'm slightly nervous now about handling eggs uh, and moving eggs and checking eggs. 
One of the um, unanticipated impacts, uh, unforeseen impacts really, of um, of COVID seems to be a um, a problem with my hands now. I've always had quite shaky hands, um, but in the last sort of four or five weeks or so, they've become really quite unsteady. Uh, and that's meant that lifting eggs out um, and handling eggs and, and moving eggs has been quite a challenge. Fortunately, uh, so far I haven't done any damage to them, but that's more luck than anything else. So I'm I'm, I'm nervous about that. I'm nervous about moving eggs, so I'm, I'm not going to interfere with, with, with them too much. So on new colours, well, they're, they're well on the way, aren't they? Which is... Um, which is great. We've done bit of the week. All that is left to do on today's episode. It's time for your questions. It's question time. A lot of questions around this time of the year are um, around breeding, but a couple of questions in from our good friend Debbie Stout. Um, first is around my quarantine um, procedure and, and, and what I do when I'm bringing new birds in. And it was um, it was one of those questions that, that sort of really got me thinking, Debbie. Uh, so thanks very much. Um, the... Um, my quarantine procedure is um, is pretty basic, to be honest. Um, I, as a a, a, a general rule, um, don't bring in birds from breeders or individuals that I don't know. Um, normally, the birds I bring in, uh, I've either know the individual or I've been to their room uh, and seen the environment and the surroundings that they're in. Um, I don't buy birds from bird sales or, or, or bird shows. Now, I'm not casting any aspersions on, on those as, as a place to buy birds. Um, I guess what I'm thinking is that uh, perhaps I take an overconfidence in that I know the people that I'm buying birds from. Generally, my uh, quarantine procedure is, is frontline. Uh, so I'm looking to see what is, um, you know, what's in there in terms of uh, mite. So I, I, I treat birds for mite. Um, and I will, um, I will often sort of single birds birds off in, in the first instance, although with some birds, um, you know, I'll pop them, if they're part of a pair, I'll pop them straight in. I've done that on, on a couple of occasions and touch wood, not had any, uh, not had any issues. Um, so um, the, 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 the principle, the thought process of a quarantine, uh, you know, idea that we, I, I think is, is really good. As I say, perhaps I'm a little bit um, uh, overconfident in, in the source of my my birds um, second question from Debbie uh, was around um, when do you set the eggs um, which is a great question and uh, I know a lot of people um, wait until the fourth leg, uh, egg is laid or the third egg is laid and then set them on the night before um, the, that egg is laid and, and as a general rule I do set my eggs at night and, and for the reason Debbie that, that you suggested in that you know they'll, they'll hatch later in the day and it gives the, the young that opportunity to, to absorb all of the goodness from the um, the yolk sac um, that's as a general rule what I'll do it does depend on on work commitments and, and that's one of the other things that I'm um, I'm very clear on really in that I'll I'll hold eggs um, I'll hold eggs back and I'll try and set multiple nests at the same time so ideally three nests at a time I've got four laying at the moment I'll wait till they've all laid the full clutch although one is, a, is an egg ahead of the others um, and then I'll I'll give them that uh, I'll set all of those eggs at, at the same time so if I need to move things around you know I, I'm, I'm able to and um, the other thing or the question really relating to eggs that I've had into the channel is you know but, you know, my hens only laid two eggs and then it stopped laying or my hens laid um, two eggs and then missed the day and then it's laid. And early on in the season, in fact, late on in the season, that can happen. Um, I've had birds that have laid uh, a couple of eggs and, and then not laid again and shown no indication of sitting. I've had birds that have laid three eggs 
and um, have uh, have then, you know, not sat. I've had birds that have laid two eggs and sat and birds that have laid six eggs and sat. They're all different. They'll all do very different things and they'll all drive us absolutely bonkers with their behaviour. So don't panic. You know, if a bird lays an egg and misses a day, that can mean that the eggs are not likely to be fertile. If the bird doesn't sit, it can mean that they know almost instinctively that the eggs aren't going to be fertile even before they've had a chance to, to develop. Um, just trust the instincts of the birds. But the beauty is, and this is something that I think, um, you know, I, I recognise my fortunate, how fortunate I am with this is, you know, I've probably got 35, 40 hens, canary hens in the canary room in, in the varying different varieties. And so that that means that, you know, in, inevitably, half a dozen or so won't do anything they'll cause me nothing but trouble but that will be okay because the other vast majority will hopefully produce for me so you know I, i'll be able to move past that understand it's a very different situation for those of you who've just got a couple of pairs or even one pair of birds so my advice to everybody is just stick with it you know the other thing as well different parts of the globe it's one of the questions i ask people where are you in the world different parts of the globe different climates different breeding seasons different conditions different humidity different environments and those are all factors that we need to take into consideration when we're breeding birds final question came in from a really good friend of mine um and that's around aggressive hens uh, you know what happens when you run a cockbird in and, and and the hen just fights him off well i um I actually, out of the corner of my eye, as I'm watching, I've just seen a pair of Norwich mate, which is incredible. It's the, the, the cockbird I had off Keith uh, and the hen. I've just seen the mate in the corner of the cage. So fingers crossed for that. Anyway, back to where I was, wherever I was, completely distracted now. And um, what do you do if you see an over aggressive hen? Hens, uh, hens can be incredibly aggressive. It, often it's an indication that they're not quite ready for condition. Oft, sometimes it's they don't like the cockbird that you've placed with them. Um, I will um, make the decision to run a specific cockbird with a hen and will 99 times out of 100 stick to that decision. The only time when I might move it is when I see a, um, you know, a situation where, you know, a, a cockbird that I've had uh, has turned out to be a hen and, 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 you know, I've had to jiggle things around a little bit. That's the only time when I've really moved that. It's tough. Um, you just got to stick with it. Birds, you know, there's a, there's a moment you can see a bird. Sometimes they build a nest. You think, oh, these are in condition. They'll fight like cats and dogs. So, um, just stick with it is my only piece of advice and um, listen that's all we've got time for today i hope you've enjoyed the show if you have give us a thumbs up we are edging closer to 10,000 subscribers if you've enjoyed it share the channel if you haven't already hit the subscribe button hit the like hit the notification bell and um, got some exciting things coming up on the canary room over the next few weeks and months ahead thanks everybody for watching until next time Take care.